Hi guys, it's Mrs. C here with Cycle 3, week 16. Uh, this video is going to be a little different because we met via Zoom today and so I had to do things completely different. For those of you who have been doing Zoom all year, I applaud you. It is a horse of a different color trying to tutor on Zoom. So um, that's awesome. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing and how it would go. So I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you how I would adapt it to do it in class. And hopefully some of these ideas will be helpful, but they may not be. And then I'm sorry for that. <laughs> so uh, we start off with geography like we normally do. We have all of our sounds and bays this week. So um, uh, my awesome director threw together some just basic slides with all the memory work for us. And then I went in and edited with them some. Um, but we had our uh, geographical features map. Excuse me. And um, we started over in the Pamlico Sound by North Carolina and worked our way up and around. Um, that seems to work well just to either go from east to west or west to east, either way. Um, so we went through, said all of them, had them repeat, and then I had made some slides where I covered each uh, location up by some kind of shape. So I think I did a triangle, circle, square, heart, and a smiley face. So... Um, then we were say we made sure to say the names and I would really recommend to make sure that your class is repeating the names to you uh, because if they are doing Memory Master, part of Mem Memory Master for Geography is they will tell you where something where something is when you say where is the Puget Sound, they'll point to it, but then they'll also say what is this and they'll need to say the name back. So it's just good for them to be saying that name for themselves. Uh, but we went around and then after we had put our shape on top of all of it, I let each of them pick one and then I took the shape off and we saw if we remembered correctly which one was under that shape. So did that just a few times and so that was geography. Um, after geography, we did math. I am using the math song that I always use. It's the geometry song, I guess is what I'd call it. Um, it's a really short song and you can sing it every week if you want to. Um, it has all of the formulations for area and then our one for circumference for the next few weeks. So I like it just because it's catchy and it builds on itself. Um, all of my kids know it because we've seen it every year. So um, the first part of it goes, which is for this week says the area of a rectangle equals length times width. Um, and I have a few small hand motions for it, but you don't have to do the hand motions, you can do whatever. And I will link that video down below to the one that I use so you can see it. It's also a cute, again, short video, but it shows all the different areas and has all the things written up there. So, and has a little bit of piano in the background. Um, I'm not sure who it is that put that together, but it's been up there for a while because I've used it ever since I started CC, so. Uh, that was math this week. For Latin, I um, had all of my words color coded. I really like to do that. It helps me and I think it helps the kids. Um, but uh, this week we had one word that was out of place. So I gave them a minute to kind of read through it and try to figure out which word was out of place. It was. Um, so if you uh, haven't been color coding it, maybe think about doing that this year. If you're doing it up on your board, I'll just use different color markers. So um well, since we were doing it through Zoom, I labeled one through six and then had some voices or actions on the back of them. And I let each of the students pick a number via Zoom. We did all six of these um, and we just read our Latin and our English. So I did add a couple that I haven't done. Darth Vader, that was really fun. And hold, uh, say it while you're holding your tongue. And while you're holding your nose, those were two new ones that I hadn't done before that were pretty funny. Um, and they seem to enjoy those. So that's what we did for Latin. For science, I am using the Shake It Off tune for the um, periodic table of elements. Um, I will also link that video down below. It's uh, really catchy. Oh, obviously it's a catchy tune. I mean, it was like a number one hit, but it's catchy to do it to this. And I feel like the way that it spaces every, like all the elements out and says everything, you don't lose your place in it. That's sometimes I have a hard time. I mean, even with timeline where they sound so similar and I lose my place with where I am. So I like this one because it kind of breaks it up to way where you don't forget where you are. So I'll put that down below. Um, I would sing it for you, but I'm going to do you a favor and not. So 
Um, the only thing I will say is the song that I linked down below was done the last time through cycle three, which was not with the updated fifth edition. And I think they have added a number. So now it's number, element, symbol, and mass. And I can't remember which one of those wasn't in the last time. You'll hear it on there, but they have left that one. That one's not in there because it was from the last time. So super easy to add. Um, there's enough space in the song to add it. So just add it when you're singing it. But that was science. Um, for English, we had to go. So again, doing it on Zoom. Have to do a little differently. So I just made my slides where when I clicked on the word, they went, they went away on my slide. So uh, we went through those, just said them over a few times. This is our last one. <laughs> and um, so if you're doing it in class, you could have line them up and just say to go, go, goes and let them go and run across the room. Or if you have, I happen to have like matchbox cars at home, you could bring those. And when you say to go, go, goes, and they could zoom their cars and make their cars go. All kinds of things you can do for go. Um, again, mine just kind of flew off the um, flew off of the slide, and then when we got to the last slide, I let them each pick one that they wanted to go. So that's what we did for English for time or history. That's what's next. I did funny words. I'm sorry that I keep doing that, but my kids love it. Also, it was on Zoom today, so I needed to do something. Um, I'd use music, and playing music through the Zoom doesn't work super well. So. Um, I will tell you the words that I replaced because some of you requested that I tell you those words. So instead of 1917, I replaced it to 1970,000. Instead of President Wilson, it was Peter Pan. Um, oh, instead of Congress, it was costumes. And instead of World War I, it was World of Warcraft. <laughs> uh, instead of Central Powers, it was Superpowers. And instead of German U-boats, it was Jeremy Tissues. And instead of the Lusitania, it was the Jolly Roger. And instead of Citizens, it was Chimpanzees. So um, again, when I do that, I read. So I would say in 1970,000, and they would stop me and say, no, that's not right. We would correct it. And so I'd say, oh, you're right. In 1917, Peter Pan. And they would stop me and say, no, that's not right. It's President Wilson. I'd say, oh, I'm so glad you guys are here to help me. And I'd say in 1917, President Wilson. So each time we get to a funny word, we start over at the beginning and read all the way through until we get to the next funny word. So that's kind of how I get through it the seven times. Um, with this and with it being on Zoom, I gave them 10 seconds to stare at and memorize the original words because I didn't have my board up there for them to be seeing the right words. Um, and then we went to the slide with all the funny words. So that was history. Then we had timeline. So for timeline, um, I tried something new. I've read other people doing this and I don't know exactly how they did it. So I just kind of did it my own way. So. On Zoom, I had a slide where um, someone on CC Connected has made miniature timeline cards, which are so awesome. I don't know what they normally use them for, but I was able to copy the pictures of the individual timeline cards and put them onto my slide. And I made it so that the kids could pick one, I would click on it and it would disappear and there was either a bag of money or a bomb behind it. So we had three bombs and four bags of money. And the goal was to not hit the three bombs. So if you wanna do this in class, what I'm gonna do next week is I found Star Wars stickers because I have two boys. And so next week I'm gonna have three Stormtrooper cards and four like good guy cards with Chewbacca on there. And um, I will lay them out, we'll go over them and then I'll let them pick one and we'll see if we get a stormtrooper or a good guy. And then we'll go through, and I started over at the beginning each time we picked one and we went all the way through and made sure we could remember whatever card was missing. So when I do it in class, I'll just turn the card turn the card over so that they don't see the picture and the name is big on there. And we'll see if we can get through all of them. For the hand motions for this week, we have Age of Industry. So you're gonna take your fingers together like this and you're gonna go um, back and forth like that, like gears moving back together. If you would like to sign the numbers, it is 17, so this is your third finger, 17, 6, D. Okay, so 17 you're gonna rub, so this is 17, this is six, and this is zero, okay? 
And then 19, you're gonna rub your first finger. So we have 19, and then we have 69, okay? You don't have to sign those. They're not actually signed in the one, but if you want to do it, you can. If you wanna make it a little easier, if you have littles, you could just do 1760 to 1969. Uh, then we have James Cook. So we're gonna do J and then a C, and then just like Columbus, we're gonna put our ship on top of the water. We're gonna sail our ship over the ocean. Um, they don't sign anything for Australia and Antarctica. Again, if you want to, you can do an A and an A for Australia and Antarctica, but they don't do that on the timeline. Um, American Revolution. So I feel like we've done revolution before, but you're going to take your two fingers, make R's and kind of point them at each other. And the top one is going to move. And if you are like me, you always end up moving the bottom one as well, but it's really just the top one. And this is to show a revolution around the sun. Um, so not technically the kind of revolution we're talking about, but this is what they're using for that. So American Revolution and then General George Washington, we're going to make a G and then we're going to kind of point to like where his medals would be up on his lapel. Is that the right word? His shoulder. I don't know what the thing is called on the shoulder, but the, all of his medals that he had. Then we have Madison's Constitution. So just like we did for the Law of Babylon, um, we're going to put our hand up and instead of doing an L, we're going to do a C. So we have a C the Constitution and then the Bill of Rights you're gonna have a flat left hand sorry you can't see me very well flat left hand and our right hand is gonna come and we're just gonna kind of like cut up through the middle like this so Bill of Rights almost like you're doing a check with your hand but I'm gonna do it just like that Bill of Rights then we have the French Revolution so we're gonna do an F for France and we kind of flick it because we're fancy and we do revolution again and then the second great awakening is just like first great awakening, except that's number two. And we do awakening. And then the Louisiana purchase, you're gonna have a flat left hand and your right hand is gonna be on top, kind of like you're pinching a big bunch of bills. You're gonna hand it to the person like you're paying, you're purchasing something. So Louisiana purchase. And then we're gonna look around the Lewis and Clark, <gasps> we found something, expedition. So those are our hand motions for timeline. Uh, we did Norman Rockwell for art and I found these in the Tudor group. They are Saturday evening post papers. Um, we're just, we just drew, drew for this week. Uh, I went through some of his pictures and just talked about how his pictures, like you can make up a whole story to go along with them. You don't necessarily know everything that's happening, but there's a lot of expression. There's a lot of action that's going on. You can tell what's happening and you can even make up a whole backstory for how they got to where it was because there's so much detail and expression and action in his pictures. So we talked about that and I had them think about their own story and then they drew a picture. So this was one that my kids did. They're drawing a birthday party. Um, and that was what we did for art. We didn't do science this week, so I can't give you an advice on that yet. I know we are changing the experiment slightly. We are, instead of doing the bubbles, we're doing balloons where you put baking soda in a balloon, you put that balloon on top of a bottle that has vinegar and then you dump it in and then it, all the air uh, expands the balloon. So we are gonna be switching that one, but we're gonna wait till we're in person to do that. So for review, if you're doing Zoom and idea, uh, I think one of the tutors did this last year, so I kind of stole it, but I chose a few different pictures, put them on slides, and then covered them with uh, just different squares. And as the kids answered or viewed questions, I would remove the squares so that the picture started to be revealed and they would try to guess what it was. And of course, the first one I did, my son guessed that it was the Statue of Liberty after I moved one square. So maybe pick a harder picture <laughs> when I pick, so. Anyway, I just thank you guys, all you tutors out there, whether you're doing Zoom or in person, you're awesome. I appreciate you so much. All of your ideas that you share, all the encouragement you give me, it means the world. So I hope you guys have an awesome week. Hopefully we'll be back in person next week and I will see you then. Bye.